In this video, we will encounter the second symbol that is used a lot in indigo notation, the permutation symbol. This symbol might be new to you, unlike the Kronecker delta that we encountered before. So we will first take a look at what the permutation symbol is and how to memorize it, because this symbol may look a bit odd at first sight, so we will also immediately take a look at how it can be used in the first application, the cross product. First, let us take a look at our epsilon i, j, k. So it has three indices i, j and k, which can all take the values 1, 2 and 3. So you have in total, we have to specify in total 27 values, by well, 3 times 3 times 3. So how is it defined? Well, it is 1 if you have an uh, even permutation of 1, 2, and 3, minus 1 if you have an odd permutation, and 0 else. Okay, that's a bit of a difficult situation, a bit of a difficult definition. So how are we going to memorize this? Well, first of all, the epsilon 1, 2, 3 equals 1. Now, you leave the 2 and the 3 and put the 1 at the back, then it's also 1. And then you leave the 3 and the 1 and put the 2 at the back. So then you have also 1. I'll sp explain shortly why. This is just how to memorize it, which, the which ones are 1 and the which ones are minus 1. Now, if you put them in the wrong order, so 3, 2, 1, you get minus 1, like this. Then we do the same trick. We take the 3, put it in the back, and we get 2, 1, 3. That's also minus 1. And then we do the same trick, we take the 2, put it in the back, we get 1, 2, 3, we also have minus 1. So those 3 are minus 1. And the other 21, those are all 0. So uh, epsilon 1, 1, 1, epsilon 1, 1, 2, epsilon 1, 1, 3, all the other 21s are all 0. So that's nice. Most of them are 0. We have only 3 which are 1 and only 3 which are minus 1. But what does this have to do with these permutations? Uh, well, we start with uh, epsilon 1, 2, 3, that one is 1. And then uh, we do one permutation. Uh, we change the 1 and the 3, and then we get over here to the epsilon 3, to 1. Then we have an odd permutation, because we did one change, and that's why we go from 1 to minus 1. Now, if we do again one permutation, uh, so we are at epsilon 3, to 1, and then we change the 3 and the 2, and then we go to this epsilon over here, 2, 3, 1. Then we have done uh, one more permutation. So when we start from the start, we did one, two permutations. So that means that we have an even permutation now. So that's why we have a 1. If we do now one more permutation, if we change uh, the, uh, the 3 and the 1 to 1, 3, we get over here. Uh, so we have from the start done three permutations, so we have an odd permutation, and we get a minus one. Uh, and you can do the, the other two the same way. So that's the relation with the notion of even and odd permutation. But I just memorized epsilon 1, 2, 3, x1, and then if you put uh, the first one at the back, you keep one, and if you put the next one at the back, you keep one. And I then I memorized epsilon 3 to 1 equals minus one, and the same trick. So I myself use this trick to memorize where are the ones and where are the minus ones. Uh, so uh, this, this trick summarized, so in more general, means uh, if you start with your epsilon i, j, k, you can put the i at the back, then you have the same, and then put the uh, j at the back, you keep the same. However, if you're starting out with epsilon i, j, k, you put them in the opposite order, KGI, you pick up a sign, and uh, if you do the same trick, it, it, it uh, remains the same. So that's how you can manipulate these epsilon ij case. Why on earth do you want to use such a strange thing? Because it looks hopelessly complicated. Why do we want this in the first place? Well, let's take a look at the cross product. Uh, well, you know how the cross product worked works if you have your standard uh, unit uh, basis vectors. Cross product between uh, E1 and E2 gives you an E3, and if you flip the order, you get a minus E3. Cross product between E2 and E3 equals A1, and again, if you flip the order, you get a minus E1, and E3 cross 
e1, there's an e2, and again, if you flip the order, you pick up a sign. So there we, uh, so that's what we know of uh, about our cross product. And now the trick is that you can write this much shorter. Actually, you can use this epsilon symbol to write your cross product as e i cross e j equals epsilon i j k times e k. Now, how are we going to prove this? Well, it's sort of easy. You just have to uh, uh, take a look at all options you have. And, uh, uh, so so uh, uh, you have to check that this is true for i equals 1, 2, and 3 and j equals 1, 2, and 3. Well, fortunately, we can do it a bit faster because if you make uh, the i and j the same, so ei cross ei, you have the same vector, so this cross product is always zero. And indeed, then that gives you an epsilon i, i, k. Epsilon i, i, k is always zero because you have two the same indices. And then what is left is that you have to uh, check this for uh, 1 and 2, 2 and 1, 1 and 3, 3 and 1, 2 and 3 and 3 and 2. Uh, I will just do as an example the 1 and 2. So if you have uh, E1 uh, cross E2 over here, so you pick I equals 1 and J equals 2. So you have here epsilon, epsilon 1, 2, K, uh, EK. Well, the only way you can get a contribution if you pick K equals 3. The other terms in this sum will give zero because you will have an epsilon 1, 2, 1, which is zero, or an epsilon 1, 2, 2, which is also zero. So the only possibility to get something is like this, epsilon 1, 2, 3, E3, epsilon 1, 2, 3 equals 1, so you get E3. So this expression over here holds for um, I equals 1 and J equals 2. Uh, if you flip them, uh, I equals 2 and J equals 1, uh, the only thing you did was flipping uh, indices also on the right, uh, which gives you a sign in the epsilon symbol. So that gives you a minus E3, so that one is okay. And then homework, uh, uh, check this as well for uh, uh, 2 and 3 and 3 and 1 to check that you indeed get these expressions. So this is nice, this allows us to write our product as uh, uh, in, in one line. For example, if you now take the cross product between arbitrary vectors, A cross B, you can use summation convention to write A as AI EI and B as BJ EJ. Uh, then you note the AI and the BJ are just number scalars. You can take them in front, so that's what you do over here. And you are left with a cross product between your basis vectors. So you know your cross product uh, you leave these two where they were, and you can write your uh, cross product between the basis vectors with the epsilon symbol. And then it's convention, it's customary to uh, write the epsilon symbol first, and write it like this. And all of this is possible because uh, uh, the AIBJ, they are just numbers. Epsilon IJK is also a number, so you can take it in front, so you can uh, change the order. So that is where this. Uh, epsilon symbol is used if you have cross products and later on it will greatly help us to simplify expressions if you have to take multiple cross products so that is why this epsilon symbol will be uh, very useful for us